Hello everyone and welcome back again to our channel, Tutoring Made Easy. And welcome back to our math journey. Um, on this journey, our goal is to make math easy and enjoyable. And I hope you're enjoying it so far. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, if it is your first time, you know, coming in contact with our, you know, uh, our channel, uh, or you've been watching our videos, but you haven't found the time to subscribe to our channel, please, please, uh, do us a favor by subscribing to our channel, Tutoring Made Easy, liking this video and sharing to as many people as possible. Today, we are going to look at quadratic equations, the methods to solve quadratic equations. The last time we discussed three methods, we mentioned, sorry, we mentioned three methods, so there are three methods, um, and then we did mention that we said that the first one, we said the first one is called the factorization, uh, the factorization method. And then the other time, the, the, the next one, we said the next one is known as a quadratic formula, the quadratic formula method, right? Yeah. And then we said the last one, the last method is known as the completing, the completing of squares, of squares method. That's what we mentioned the last time. So there are three methods. There you have it. Factorization method, quadratic formula method, and completing of squares um, method. Today we are only going to focus on the first method, which is factorization method so let's look at that how does that come out so we're going to look at the factorization method sorry we're going to look at factorization method of of solving what quadratic equation you know for solving quadratic equations for solving quadratic equations so Remember that the last time we did mention that they can be written, quadratic equations can be written of the form, let's say, ax squared plus bx plus c. Don't forget that, equal to zero. And we said that this a here, the a here is not, <laughs> sorry about that. The a there is known as the coefficient of x squared, and the b here is known as the coefficient of x. And then the C is known as a constant coefficient. I hope you remember that. I hope you remember that. So now, what we do is that the method, in this method, what we do is that we always will multiply. Uh, we always have to multiply um, our A. We are going to always have to multiply our A um, by C. All right. But, okay, in this method, let me, let's backtrack a little bit, a little bit. In this method, if you have, if our A there is always, if A is equal to 1, it becomes easy, right? If A is equal to 1, we will always fo focus on the factors of C. We focus on these factors, the factors of C. That is only if A is equal to 1. If A is equal to 1, we focus on the factors of C. And how do we do that when we find the factors of c that is two numbers two numbers we're going to look at two numbers that is two numbers right that when you multiply them when you multiply those two numbers when you multiply that is you multiply those two numbers you are going to get plus c you're going to get this whole thing here the whole thing here don't forget that not only C, but the whole thing at plus C, it could be negative C. Now, this, those same two numbers, when you multiply, you should get plus C. And also, when you add them, when you add those two numbers together, when you add those two numbers together, you're going to get what? When you add those two numbers together, you're going to get plus B. Why plus B? This whole thing here. You're going to get plus B. Not only B, but plus B. 
So those are the rules. First, when you see a quadratic equation, the first thing you look at is if A is 1. This one here. Is A1. If A is 1, then focus on the factors of plus C. Let me look, put it right there well. The factors of plus C. You focus on the factors of plus C. This one here. And then when you look at the factors of plus C, what are the two numbers of uh, two numbers? Now, when you multiply them, you're going to get plus C. And then when you add those two numbers, you're going to get plus B. So this is the second step, I think. Sorry, this is the second step. And then that is the third step. The third step is right here. Look for three num two numbers. When you multiply, you get plus B, plus C. And when you add, you're going to get plus B. All right. So we're going to take we're going to take an example. Um, we're going to take an example um, and see where that example is going to lead us. Where that example um, is going to lead us. So we're going to look at um, x squared minus x minus six is equal to zero that's our example right there now we said that the first thing we need to look at is if a is equal to one and it's true you can see right here that a is equal to one so we are we are done with our first step is correct the second step is to come to what this one right here this whole thing here so we are going to look at the factors right number two step two is to look for the factors of what we're going to look for the factors of negative 6. Not 6. <laughs> Be careful. Negative 6. Not 6. So second step is to just focus on the factors of negative 6. What does that mean? It means that we are going to look for two numbers, which is our third step. We are going to look for two numbers. Our third step is to look for two numbers that when we multiply, when we multiply those two numbers, when we multiply, we are going to get what? When we multiply those two numbers, we are going to get negative 6. But on the other hand, when we, when we add those two numbers, we are going to get what? When we add those two numbers, we are going to get this thing right here. <laughs> we are going to get this thing right. We're going to get negative 1. Don't forget, we are not looking at this x here. It is negative here. The whole thing here is only negative one you can see right here okay it's it's negative one if you look at this this is a it's one and this is this is the x squared right there if you look at this x that is what is here but this b the plus b is negative one you can see it's negative one and then the plus c is the negative six so we are having a squared one second step factors of negative say six and two numbers when we multiply we get negative six and when we add we're going to get negative one does anyone know what these um two numbers are if anybody knows it the person can you know come up and then say it can we look at these two numbers negative three and two if we look at negative three times two we are going to get what negative six but but this same negative three plus two this negative three plus two gives us negative one the negative three plus two it gives us what negative one and then i think we've satisfied our requirement we've, we've been able to successfully look for two numbers when we multiply we're getting negative six and at the same time the same two numbers when we add them, we are getting negative 1. So I think the numbers are, I think the two numbers are, the two numbers are negative 3 and plus 2. Negative 3 and plus 2. So now from there, uh, we could easily know that x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to uh, uh, positive 2. You know, that's it. But let's see how we work it. So remember that we started off by saying x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. That is the question. How are we going to solve that? We said the numbers are negative 3. So we're going to have x squared. Then the first number, minus 3x. Second number, plus 2x. 
and it would bring the negative 6 there equal to 0. Is that okay? x squared, the two numbers that we found, negative 3x. The second number is plus 2x and then negative 6. Now, we are going to group them together. We are going to have... We are going to have... We're going to have x squared minus 3x coming together in one parenthesis plus into another parenthesis 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now, we're going to factor out... We're going to factor out x. We're going to have x out. Inside, it's going to be x minus 3 plus 2 out into parenthesis x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, can you see that these two are the same? So we'll put that in one category, and we're going to bring this guy together. So we're going to get we're going to get x plus 2 together, and then we're also going to get x minus 3 together, all equal to 0. Now remember that we are having we are having x plus 2, x minus 3, all equal to 0. What it means is that x plus 2 will be equal to 0, and x minus 3, so to be this plus 2 will be equal to 0, and this is also equal to 0. So we can find x. Our x is equal to 0, and this has to go there. It becomes minus 2. Why? Because this sign is plus. Once it cross over the equal to sign, the sign changes to negative 2. If here was negative, the sign would have been plus 2. Plus 2. So we're going to get x is equal to negative 2. And here, we're also going to have x is equal to 0. This crosses over here, and we're going to get what? What do you think we're going to get? The sign has to change to plus 3. This is negative. It changes to plus 3, and x is equal to... It's called, x becomes equal to 3. So we know x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to... x is equal to 3. So there you have it on using... Um, uh, the factorization method if a is equal to one now let's look at a situation where we are having let's look at a situation where we are having what a is not equal to one a is actually greater than one what are we going to do <laughs> so let's imagine that we have our quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero and we are saying that if the first step we are saying that if a is not equal to 1. Actually, A is greater than 1. If A is greater than 1, we said that the second step is to do what? The second step, what we're going to do is that. The second step, we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply A because A is not equal to 1. Multiply A and plus C. Multiply A and plus C. And when we do that, we are actually going to get what? We are going to get AC. Because A times C is AC. That's what we're going to get. We're going to get AC. Right? And the moment we have AC, the moment you have AC, the third step, the third step becomes finding the factors. We're going to find the factors. Uh, we're going to find the factors of AC. All right, we're going to find the factors of AC. And to do that, <clears throat> to do that, we're going to look for two numbers. Again, as usual, we're going to look for two numbers that when we multiply, when we multiply, we are going to get what? AC. But on the other hand, on the other hand, when we add those two numbers, we rather get, or we also get AC. We also get AC. So those are the three steps. Those are the three steps. So we are going to pick uh, a question and see how that helps. So we're going to have a question like 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. It's equal to 0. Plus 2 equal to 0. Now, don't forget that we do have, on top of it, we have like ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. That's how quadratic equations look like. Now, we can see that our a, <clears throat> our a is not equal to one, it's greater than one. So the first requirement has been satisfied, one. If a is not equal to one, actually a is what? Sorry, I wanted to use a different color. It, actually, a is equal to what? Two. 
the moment that happens, we say that we are going to multiply, right? That's what we say. We're going to multiply. Second step, we're going to multiply. That's our second step. We're going to multiply uh, A and C. And what's our A and C? We're going to multiply A and C. What is our A and C? Our A, our A is actually 2. And our C is also plus 2. So that means that our A and C, A times C, is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. So that gives us our AC. Now we say that the third step, the third step is to find the factors. <gasps> sorry, fact, sorry. Find the factors of 4. And we said that to do that, we need to look for two numbers that when we multiply, we are going to get what? 4. We are going to get plus 4. But on the other hand, when we add these same two numbers, when we add these same two numbers, we are also going to get what? We are going to get plus 4. We are going to get plus 4. So remember... Sorry, is it plus four? <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going to get plus four. We're going to get, sorry for the confusion. Uh, when we add it, we are going to get this one here. When we add, so I'm going to change the rule a little bit. We're going to add, when we add it uh, over here, when we add, if you're able to notice that, that'll be great. When we rather add it, when we add it, we're rather going to get what? B. When we add it, we're going to get what? Plus B. We're going to get plus B. So here, when we add it, we are going to get what? Minus 4. Because our plus B is this one right here. It's minus 4. We are going to get minus 4. So when we multiply, we're going to get plus 4. But when we add, we're going to get negative 4. And I think those two numbers, um, those two numbers, is negative 2 and negative 2. So that negative 2 times negative 2 gives you plus 4. However, when you have negative 2, negative 2, and you are adding it to another negative 2, you are owing two debts. You are owing this and owing that. So you are owing both. It becomes negative. It becomes negative 4. It becomes negative 4. So we have our numbers. There you there we have it. We have our numbers. So how are we going to solve that? Our numbers are negative 2 and 2. So we're going to start trying to solve, you know, um, we're going to start solving. I think my pen is, I don't know whether I've my, yeah, I don't have a chart. So I'm going to use my hand. <laughs> so we're going to have two, we're going to have two X squared. Sorry. We're going to have, sorry. We're going to have two X squared. We're going to have two X squared. We're going to have two X squared. Minus the the first one, the first number minus two x, and then the other one is also minus two x. Yeah, so two x squared minus two x minus two x, and then we are going to have our plus two. Remember, we don't go and we don't write plus four. We only write plus two there. We only multiply the a and the c, which is two times two, to get four to help us find the numbers. So we're going to still keep our plus 2. This 2 is going to remain the same. So we're going to have 2x squared. We're going to have we're going to have 2x squared minus 2x. Because this is the first number, minus 2x. And this is the second number, another minus 2x right there. So I hope that clarifies that. We have been able to do that. And all is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to 0. So now we are going to group them. We're going to have our 2x squared in the same parentheses as the negative 2x. Now remember, be careful. We are not going to put another plot. We are not going to put, we are going to put another group in a parentheses. Now the minus comes out and we bring a parentheses. The moment we do that, we have 2x. We cannot put negative there. If you put negative there, the, you know, the negative is multiplying the bracket. If you do that, it means negative times 2 to give, you, to give us this. But if we Put in another negative, it means that it's negative times negative that gives us plus here, which is not what we are doing. This not what, that's not what we want. We don't want that. All right. So we're going to take it again. So here it's negative. And then we also have here to be negative, parenthesis open, 2x. Now we need to bring negative here because this negative 
and that negative, when they multiply, you're going to get positive. Why are we multiplying? Because we brought a parenthesis outside. A parenthesis or a bracket is the same as multiplication. It's the same as multiplication. It's the same thing as what? Multiplication. So you're going to have negative 2 here in a parenthesis, and it's all going to be equal to what? Zero. It's all going to be equal to zero. Now, what can we see in this parenthesis right here? Let me use a different color. What do you think we can see? There's something common happening in this parenthesis, and it's two. We can bring two outside, and also x. We can bring x outside, and then we put a parenthesis in there. We need x again so that when we multiply 2x, when we multiply this by that, we get back the 2x squared. You remember, 2x multiplying x. You remember the indices. This x and this x are the same, so we can add their power. So we're going to get 2 stand there, x to the power 1 plus 1, and we get 2x squared. So don't forget that. Don't please forget that. <laughs> okay, please. So now we brought out we brought out our 2x, and we're having you know 2x outside and x inside minus what? 1. So that 2x multiplied by negative 1, we get this negative 2x, which is in the parentheses. We also bring this negative out. And then we, what is common is 2. So we bring 2 outside, and we are going to have only x inside. And we are also going to have minus 1 also inside equal to 0. Now, we can put them together. We are going to have 2x, this 2x minus this 2. They can be, come together. This 2x and this minus 2 come together. And then you're also going to have the x minus 1 coming together because they are the same, equal to 0. So now we know that. We have 2x minus 2 is equal to 0, which is 2x is equal to 0 plus 2. Why? We are looking for x. So when this one comes here, it becomes plus 2. It becomes plus 2. The sign changes. So we have 2x is equal to 2. And when we divide both sides by 2, when we divide both sides by 2, we are going to get x is equal to 1. We're going to get x is equal to 1. Now, the other part is also when you have uh we have this one also being equal to one so if you have x minus one is equal to zero then x is going to go to zero who can tell me it's going to be plus one because the one is moving to the zero so that it can help us find the x so you have x is equal to one so basically x is equal to one is the uh answer in solving this quadratic equation if it is confusing you i would like you to be pausing and then you go back you keep pausing, you go back, and everything will become very lucid and very clear. Please, if it is your first time joining our channel, uh, Tutoring Made Easy, please do us a favor by subscribing. If you've been also watching our videos, but you haven't had the time, you're busy, you know, or it hasn't occurred to you to subscribe, please do us a favor by subscribing to our channel, liking the video, and sharing it to as many people as possible so that we can grow this channel together as a family as we embark on this math journey to make math easy and comfortable. I'll come to you another time. Take care and bye.